Hi, everybody. I am Holly Celiano, and I have a very special guest today. I have Jean Hurtler, and Jean is um, involved in the Republic. She has written four books, I believe it is, and yes. um, is going to tell her story, how she got involved in the Republic, and what we, the people, need to do to band together to help bring this back up and running for this country. So welcome, Jean. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, Holly. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't you tell the audience um, history of how you got involved in the, the Republic and the books you've written, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Well, um, thank you for having me. So happy to be here and so happy to share. I've been on a, a spectacular journey with my husband for the last 13 and a half years. Uh, I have a background in business administration primarily executive management. Um, I've done a variety of things in life and uh, as the course of life goes in the journey. But it was December of 2010 when I learned that America was being restored. And I'd learned that from my chiropractor. And I was thrilled to learn that, although I didn't understand everything that he was saying to me. Um, I just, it was a Friday. I went home and called out to my husband who was shoveling snow and said, hey, America's been restored. And he said, what does that mean? And of course, we had concerns because we'd been through um, some concerning presidents in our nation. And at that time, we were dealing with Mr. Obama. And you might recall at the time that the election went through, uh, gun sales were, they passed historical sales. and ammunition wasn't attainable, not not in Wisconsin anyhow. So there were concerns by people all over America. And we saw the federal government going off the tracks when we went through Bush Jr. with the Lehman Brothers scandal and the, uh, the bankers being bailed out while the American people that were caught in the mortgage uh, foreclosure scandal and, and they were equity stripped of all of their equity in their homes and their mortgages were taken from them. You know, I thought to myself, why did our government bail out the bankers who then had gave themselves huge bonuses, um, had wild parties, and the American people, if they would have got the money, they could have paid off their mortgages and the banks would have got it anyhow. So just some logic in there is our government's our government's not right. We've got concerns here. So I spent the weekend researching to figure out what was happening. And I ended up learning a plethora of things. And uh, there was this movement that had been going on and 2010 was a remarkable year of what they had achieved. Um, and what I'd learned is that uh, that earlier that winter, uh, March of 2010, March 29th and 30th, the American people had assembled in all 50 states and they served notice on their 50 governors to return the government to the constitution. And they'd also served the joint chiefs of staff. So they followed up a, a proper uh, law protocol and uh, the governors ignored them. So going through the year, um, they had to decide what to do. And, and that July, they decided that they were going to re-inhabit the original American Republic that our founding fathers had created. And uh, it's a process of things. And of course, when you work with hundreds of people, um, there's an organization that has to take place. So David and I had come along in December and they had a, a convening of Congress just three weeks before in Utah in November, which was a miraculous event, really to get that many people together to where they had more than a quorum of states together, where they put together a remarkable document that uh, where they adopted our, our founding uh, documents, the, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Holy Bible, which might take some people by surprise, um, and of course, the Northwest Ordinance is in there too as a founding document. And um, that was the first time that Congress, the de jure Congress, the lawful Congress had convened in over 150 years since 
President Lincoln's time and really before President Lincoln because Congress had bailed out on him after he was elected. So by the time his inauguration went forth, there was no quorum of Congress. So listening to these folks, I was captivated. And I want to say I'm a believer. And I have been for years. I, I love the word of God. I love the creator. I love my fellow man. Um, at that point, it was it was the time in my life that I was the deepest with the Lord I had been. I, I was in, in the word of God in the morning, at night. I didn't watch TV. And I, I just sought the Lord. And um, so my discernment was pretty keen. And what I discerned from these people was something special is going on. I had this compelling in my heart that uh, I'd never experienced it to that degree before. So I knew that God was in it. Um, I didn't have all of the understanding back then, but just enough to know that I was supposed to join this movement and be there and to help restore our country, America. And my husband, of course, too. And uh, he's a veteran and he loves our country. Um, he, he loves the creator. And we decided that that there was just such a compelling that we were going to join this move and do what we could to support it. So um, I didn't have a background in government, um, but I, I have some talents and some skills that I thought perhaps I could bring forward. And then the re-inhabited president, James Timothy Turner, he would be on national calls and he would be on various radio programs. Uh, and I would listen to them all. And he would exhort the American people, step up and fill your office seats. Um, and when someone else more capable and qualified comes along, then you can step aside. So that's what I thought I would do. And that's how it began for me. And uh, it's been been quite the journey. So for me, it, it began in my home state of Wisconsin, which we, we look at as Wisconsin Free State. So being a free free state, not a slave state. So an original state of the American Republic. And in that journey, um, I saw many things. There, there were many experiences, many human behaviors. When you have hundreds of people that come from varied walks of life and different behaviors, um, much, had, much had happened in that time. And one thing, a big thing, it was the end of 2012, where um, we have to face the fact that we're up against a dark group of people that usurped our country, that usurped our, our government. They did it a long time ago, and they have done it in a nefarious way, in a clandestine way, to where the American people wouldn't know. So they put the American Republic in dormancy in the reconstruction era of the civil war years. And then they went forward. Um, they moved slowly, gradually, but by 1871, they had a bought off and bribed Congress to where um, they went forward with the act of 1871 that created a new government. And we call that the corporate democracy. And I want to say to you that Dr. Benjamin Rush who was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, had said, democracy is the devil's own government. Our, our founding fathers hated democracy. And where that may shock some of you, that's the truth. They created a republic and a remarkable republic at that, one that had never been done before. So the end of 2012, um, there were many agents of uh, the de facto um, corporate government that had infiltrated and would create problems and chaos. And um, there were assassination attempts on President Turner. Um, God had a plan for him because they weren't successful, but they did manage to put fraudulent charges on him um, related to IRS crimes that he did not do, but he went through a, a kangaroo court and um, even though the judge had said to him, we aren't sentencing you for any crimes, you haven't done any crimes, we're sentencing you for the potential of committing crimes. 
and they gave them 18 years. They started off with a few hundred years, but then they gave it 18 years. And even if he had done what they claimed that he'd done, he should have only got five years. So he went into federal prison. And our next man in line, we didn't have a vice president at the time. That's another story. So the next in line by law would be the Senate pro temp, who is our current president right now. And his name is James Buchanan Geiger, a very interesting name to cross the bridge from Abraham Lincoln, uh, because the last American president on the de jure side that had a quorum of Congress was James Buchanan. So here we come across and we have James Buchanan Geiger in that journey, um, I'll, I'll say that um, a remarkable thing happened where uh, Mr. Turner was in the Montgomery jail while the court hearings were going on. And I would write to him, uh, my husband and I would help sustain him. Um, it's not an easy thing being in the jail system or the prison system and everything is so expensive. So we were just helpful. And I had met him before. Uh, David and I had traveled to Alabama in the uh, latter part of 2011 to attend a class that he had taught. He's, he's a brilliant man with quite a background. And then he had been to Wisconsin a few times and we had met him there. We had the privilege of staying with him where, where he was at and uh, just a tremendous anointing, a, a very charismatic individual, a uh, man of integrity. So, um, what happened is it as the court proceedings went forward and toward sentencing some months later, uh, the powers that be blocked him from his leaders, completely blocked him. All of his phone numbers were blocked. They were preventing them from filing papers um, in the court system. They they made an extra uh, judicial file. So papers went in this other file, not in the court file. And um, he was left on his own. There's quite a story in what happened to him. So um, the amazing thing is that July, when the sentencing was going on, I was trying to help his leaders uh, connect with him and, and so forth. And, and that, that it, it just wasn't very helpful. There, there was a determined higher power to make sure that he wouldn't. But the amazing thing in that is um, he happened to have my phone number. Uh, because the, the Christmas before he was going to give David and I a phone call to thank us for our assistance. And we didn't answer 800 numbers, so we never got that call. And that was probably divine providence, because if they, if the powers that be knew our number, they would have blocked us too. So when I would write to him, I would refer to him as brother. He's, he's a brother in Christ. And, um, the only thing I can think of why they allowed me to remain in contact with them is they thought that I was his blood sister. So uh, his wife and me were the only ones that he had contact with for years. So um, going forward uh, into the books, this is another part of the scenario. So we're into early 2014. And uh, at that time, uh, I, I have writing skills and Republic leadership had asked me if I would help out by writing a uh, press release. And that was in support of the Family Research Council at that time uh, had just gone through a court hearing series from an incident that had happened two years before where a gunman who uh, was a sodomite had visited the Southern Poverty Law Center's website, who has a hate website. And their hate crimes are people who are Christian organizations that um, have a Christian foundation, if they believe in the Christian and Hebrew Bible, if they support the one man, one woman marriage. And that's where this, this uh, individual got stuck at. And he decided that uh, he picked out the Family Research Council and he was going to go to their office building, which was in, on the Virginia side of DC. And he was going to mass kill employees of that, that family council. 
And the story goes, fortunately, the guard saw that something was off about this man as he was entering the building and he wrestled with him, took a bullet, but he did stop him. And so two years later, we're, we're in the court hearing and he testifies why he was going to do it and that he found on the Southern Poverty Law Center website, uh, them on the hate map. And so Family Research Council chairman, who was uh, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, U.S. Army retired, and then President uh, Tony Perkins wrote a letter to then uh, Department of Justice, you might remember the name, uh, Eric, um, I'm going to have a brain cap there, you know the name, um, Fast and Furious, Eric, it'll, it'll pop back, and then also at that time, FBI Director James Comey, we know those names real well, and exhorted them to unpartner or at least take the partnership that they had with the FBI off their website. Under the Obama administration, um, the Department of Justice and their law enforcement arm, the FBI, partnered with the Southern Poverty Law Center. And that is not a good organization. That is uh, that is an unsafe organization Eric that puts Holder. out propaganda. Eric Holder. That's it. It's Eric yep. Holder. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, we know his name real well, Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. So these are men that, that lack integrity and have not served our country well at all. Um, so the press release I was going to write would be in support of their letter to those, those can I call them gentlemen, um, that they would unpartner with the FBI, at least on their on their website. And um, when when I write, I research everything out so that I have all the facts together and I know what I'm writing about. And I stumbled across this conspiracy that was overwhelming. I ended up spending three days researching it out and was stunned with what I learned. And uh, I went back to the Republic leader that had asked me to write the press release. And I said, hey, look, this is bigger than that. And he, he, you know, he said, what do you mean? So I explained to him what I'd seen. And he three-wayed me into then acting Secretary of State um, and he had me explain to her what I found. And she said, I want you to write down everything that you saw. I want you to take your time and I want you to well document it. And I said, okay. And it was a week later when the original Republic leader had called to check on me and said, how's it going? And I said, I'm stuck. I'm so overwhelmed. This is so big. I don't know where to begin. And he said to me, why don't you consider it a legal brief for the courts of heaven? And immediately there was this inspiration and this writing flow. I knew how to write legal briefs. And what do you do for you start with the history for the court? And so I thought, well, I'll start with the American Republic's history because it belongs to us, the people. It doesn't belong to the de facto corporation. It belongs to us. So I began this writing journey and um, it, it was a few months later, I had a like the first draft and leaders had shared that with then President Geiger. And he had made contact through them back to me of, why don't you consider looking at the dark part of our history and uh, realize that that's part of our history too. And I knew what he was talking about. I knew about Freemasons. I knew about uh, the Black Pope and so forth from years before. And so I, I, I took a serious look at it and I, I found out of print books by Civil War generals and um, other firsthand accounts. And I decided that that it was the right thing to do to interface that history in with our truthful history. So I continued to do this. And by the end of the year, um, and I was putting in long hours, I worked 12 to 17 hours, virtually seven days a week. It turned out to be for four years. But by the end of that year, 2014, leadership were taking sections of it in PDF format and putting it on the website. And um, we had a Senator in Wisconsin a beautiful former United States Marine who downloaded it, printed it, read it, and called my husband and said, 
the American people need to read this right away. This needs to be published. And he published it. That It ended up publishing in, um, well, first there was volume one. It's called Reinhabited, Republic for the United States of America. And volume one is America's Truthful History. So this is all from original source material. I went through archives of government documents, uh, government journals. I went through Civil War generals books. There were several books that I found that they had written. They knew who murdered Lincoln. They knew what happened. Uh, Firsthand accounts. I went through other out of print books, uh, went through sermons from the 1700s. And boy, did I learn a lot. And then uh, uh, our, our beautiful Senator Don Adams uh, published that first volume. And it, it was so large, my manuscript was so large, my, my legal brief for the Court of Courts of Heaven was so large, volume two came out, and this is uh, Re-Inhabited, Republic for the United States of America. Volume two is the story of the re-inhabitation. So this book goes into the story of what the American people did in 2010 when they assembled in all 50 states, and uh, the who, the what, the where, the when, why, how, all of the, the details of um, what they had done in law and also internationally by the law of nations to do this and in serving the Joint Chief of Staffs al along with the uh, 50 governors. Also served were the, uh, the World Court at The Hague and the Committee of 300, the, the Luciferian breed. Um, there was the Universal Postal Union and then the United Nations. So the law of nations was followed in doing this. And the miraculous on that was that proof of service was obtained, which they don't give proof of service. So we know there was a divine favor in order to obtain that. So in this journey going forward, I'll say um, I had received a letter from President Turner in prison that was maybe early 2016, and, and I'm still in the writing journey at this point. Uh, by then I was working on volume two, and I was on a, a, a national prayer call. And on that call, uh, uh, I read the letter from President Turner, and a gentleman that attends that call is a retired federal judge. And he had said to the Republic chaplain, uh, has, has anyone taken Mr. Turner to the courts of heaven in, in a spiritual um, way. And uh, the chaplain said, well, no, we, we, we haven't done that. And they ended up arranging some um, beautiful men of God. And, and I uh, participated with them. And how I was led was taken 70 key points out of both volumes of Re-Inhabited. And uh, we did a conference call and I read those 70 points. My husband was downstairs and he heard from the stairwell what I was reading. He was taken to tears. And when I finished and went downstairs, he said, Jean, that needs to publish in a book. And I told him to go jump in a lake because I was, you know, after so many years of writing long hours, it was like, don't put more on me. But it did publish. And this is called James Timothy Turner, an American president, political prisoner, a legal brief and appeal to the courts of heaven. And there is a, a back part on this, which is the, the true history of the great awakenings in our history, the first great awakening in 1740, the second great awakening, which was a Freemason scandal uh, of the murder of William Morgan in 1826. And uh, then Reverend Charles Finney, we might know his name real well. He was the main leader back then that, that tells that story. And there was a third great awakening just before the Civil War in 1857, 1858. That's a remarkable story. And of course, we've had some renewals since that time, but I believe we're in the start of a great awakening right now. And then um, I had a, a little bit of a recovering time in there when President Geiger had asked that my husband and I write another book. And uh, I, I sure didn't want to do that. I, I just felt like it was enough, but my husband ended up taking the lead on that. And uh, some remarkable things happened to me to where 
uh, I ended up writing a paper and uh, really a, a tremendous download someone else had gotten. And then I had understanding on that. And that ended up, uh, that just published this this um, February. It's God's solution for America and the nations of the world. This is a spiritual revolution. These are answers. This is what the American people need to do to recover our country. This is um, really, it's a refined and polished work of all of our years of studying. And, and my husband, uh, he's been a student of the founding fathers. He, he has dressed in apropos and given speech, founding father speeches in costume through the years and um, memorized speeches, quotes. And um, so we've been in this together. So Jean, so, where can uh, the audience get your books? Where are they available? Oh, thank you, Holly. Well, the book website is reinhabitedrepublic.com. And uh, there you will learn uh, a little bit about each book. And you'll also see a presentation by a former Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, San Dr. Sandy Marecki, um, that's on that book website also. They're sold, the books are sold through Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble. Those are sources where those can get. I, I apologize about Amazon type thing, but um, they were sold off the book website until our beloved Don Adams had passed away a few years ago. So that's our, our resource right now. So. so let me ask you some questions because this is for most of the audience listening. They're not even aware of the behind the scenes of restoring the Republic. I know a lot of people in these truth or communities have been under the impression that the Republic was already restored, just waiting for Donald Trump to step in and you know take over. That is the impression in a lot of the truth or community that he will just dissolve the corporation and you know the Republic will stand up and he'll just assume the position. But listening to you and educating myself, the, we, the people, need to restore the republic ourselves. And it was being done yes. by a group of people back to 2010, really from, it's a grassroots movement from the ground up where it's been reestablished legally, lawfully, and rightfully and it's something that all the American people can be part of. We can join this yes. movement. So that's where a, a, I think a big piece is missing for most people. They already thought this was done, but it's not. And we still need it, a lot not. of help. Mm -hmm. Those there are two separate entities. There are two separate jurisdictions. The corporation, which is still in existence, uh, that will collapse when the Federal Reserve collapses, and that's in process of uh, occurring right now. Last year, we saw over five thousand banks close or collapse, and uh, we we know the writings on the wall. Uh, Janet Yellen, um, the She's Secretary of Treasury. She used to be the chairman of the Fed. She came out in November and, and called it insolvent. That's the first time through all the years that that word was ever brought up. Let me back up a little bit before I, I, I go on to stress the importance of the two different entities. James Timothy Turner, um, he began teaching the American people. 1994, he started teaching the Constitution and the Bible. And uh, he said there was little interest back then. Uh, going forward, he began a radio program. He had a friend that owned a radio station. And uh, he grew a following into the tens of thousands. That's where uh, a lot of the American people in the 50 states came from to, to form the assemblies in their states. And uh, one broadcast, uh, there was a download of 18 thousand of that one program and the military caught that and they four of military representatives showed up to him in person and told him that they were looking for patriot leaders um, and they explained to him that 
the corporation is going to collapse. And when that happens, uh, Bush Sr. Uh, in 1992 signed a treaty with the UN that when the corporation collapses, the United Nations would come on our soil and take receivership of the American people and all of our assets. The military wouldn't be able to do anything about it because there would be no civil authority. So they were looking for patriot leaders that would be able to help pull the American Republic out of dormancy and re-inhabit it and then start working toward restoration, which would prevent the UN from coming on the, on the soil. And they also told him that when the Federal Reserve collapses, that's when the corporation will go down. So they asked him if he would write the plan. And so he took it upon himself. He's a fasting and praying man of God. And uh, that's what he did. He fasted, he prayed, and he wrote. And when he went back, there were several meetings that he had with military in various locations. And uh, when he met with them again, and they looked at the plan, they, they asked him, where did you get this plan from? And he said, I got it from God. And they said to him, you must have, because it's the first plan that we've seen in 50 years that might work. So folks, the gentleman that restored the American Republican law is the man that wrote the plan. And it has to be understood that the American Republic is its own jurisdiction. It's its own law form. If you look at the Declaration of Independence, we see it is a covenant with Almighty Creator God because he's acknowledged in there four times the creator of the universe, the supreme judge of the world, divine providence, uh, nature's God. That's a covenant. And also the law form is cited in there as the laws of nature and of nature's God. That's God's law. That's, that's God's will and how his creator is to operate. And also the 66 canonized books of the Bible. That's nature's God. And our founding fathers understood that because they learned primarily from uh, a man named Blackstone, who was a justice and also a professor in England at the time. And that was their main writings and, on, of learning. And that's what they wanted. So like uh, when they had voted in Congress, Continental Congress, to uh, create a republic and Benjamin Franklin walked out of, out of out of the hall, woman asked him, what have you given us, sir? And he said, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. That's what he meant, because it's a very unique republic. And the people have to be a virtuous people uh, in order to have liberty. Liberty and virtue go together. And this is a, a, a unique because it's God's law, it's moral law. So there are, are some things that are just across the standard unacceptable, like the crazy things we're seeing today. How am I doing, Holly? You're doing great. You're doing great. I do have a couple of questions, though, that I know people will be curious about. So you mentioned um, with the Republic being restored lawfully, you went to the Committee of 300. You went to yes. the Hague, the um, Postal Service and um, the UN. So mm -hmm. most people assume that the, especially the Committee of 300, they, they know that entity is not a, a good entity and same with the UN. Um, why are you going there? What does that have to do and why filing with the Hague? Can you give the history on that? I'd like to clarify that it wasn't a filing. Okay. Um, it was notice served. Okay. And that's according to the law of nations. Um, so it, it wasn't just our law here on the soil, but the nations of the world had to be notified as well as the principles that have been controlling it. So following the law of nations required that those principles would be served notice. Um, and nothing in particular special had to be done because the American Republic is as those leaders had researched, they found that the Republic was never dissolved. It was never repealed uh, by Congress back then in the Reconstruction era. Um, so there were treaties that were already in place, like the Jay Treaty and so forth. So all they had to do was serve notice in law. Okay. 
that that clarifies that for everybody. So it, basically, it's just giving notice that this is being put back in place. We have standing. Pretty much. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, Ms. Mr. Trump, I, I respect him very much for what he's done. He has. Uh, I'm I'm certain that he's prevented a genocide on our our land. Really, um, we we have the understanding that uh, the elite plan that Hillary was supposed to get that selection, not election. They have selections, not elections, according to FDR. And uh, she would have finished us off. Obama did a, a number, but but between the two of them, um, we would have been done. So Mr. Trump sacrificed an awful lot and, and also his family. And I, I respect them for that. We have to remember that he was the president of the corporation. Mm -hmm. That's a different jurisdiction. That's a different law form. And um, he's... He's helped them. Uh, he's given them enough rope where they're hanging themselves, really. And they are collapsing on their own because of their own immoral um, activities. And the, the Federal Reserve was designed that it would, would not last forever. It's unsustainable. And that's what the military had said to Mr. Turner. It's unsustainable. It, it's not going to last. It's going to collapse. And we must have a civil authority on, on land. So um, I believe that uh, President Trump has a part. Uh, I believe he's God's wrecking ball for uh, you know letting, letting all the deeds done in darkness be seen in visible light to help awaken the people. It's been a wonderful psyop for the people to have the veil taken away from their eyes to see this for themselves. And then as the American people have done their own research and learned history and then connect the dots, we've been able to wake up more people. We have over 300 million people in this nation and how, how many illegals have entered this nation as well. It's not just about America, it's about the nations of the world. And yes. even the the prophetic scriptures for in eschatology, I'm a student of eschatology. I, I love the study of end times through the word of God. And, and I have a I have a prophetic gifting. I, I love the prophetic word. Um we it 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 says that in, in the end times of the latter day, those uh money changer kings would come to an end, and God was going to restore his government on the land. And there's um, doctrines out there that don't necessarily agree with the word, but um, in Acts chapter three, verses 20 and 21, it says that the restoration has to happen before Christ's return. So that's food for thought. And we're also given a command by the Lord himself that we're to occupy until he comes. So we best be standing up and, and standing on what is right and what is good and on right principle to do all that we can to stand for God's law on the land and realize that the corporation is collapsing. Mr. Trump was president of the corporation. Um, if the corporation were to make it to the next election, the realization is that he would be the president of the corporation. And where the American Republic is, it's an interim government. It's not a permanent government. It's uh, those that are holding office right now are simply placeholders until the American people and mass are awakened and they're educated. They have to have knowledge to understand what happened. They, they need an education to understand what the American Republic is and our truthful history because we've been so propagandized and not taught in, in schools for generations, at least four generations. Uh, that there will be, uh, my understanding is there will be 120 days once the corporation collapses and we go into a martial law um, to educate the people. And then there would be permanent ele elections and they can put it in as their Republic president, whoever they want. But this is, this is the true uh, way that it will occur. So I know there are a lot of groups out there that are attempting to form the Republic. They're, they 
there's so many I hear about. And the difference with your group is you have the standing and have done the notices where I don't know if all the other groups out there that are attempting to do the same thing have done the same. I'd like to clarify and say that the Republic for the United States of America is not a group or an organization, it's a government. And I can also tell you after nearly 14 years in working toward the restoration of our country, those that claim to have the, the new Republic, they were uh, agents provocateur in the Republic in our early days and created chaos and then went off and did their own spinning. So okay. uh, that comes with a warning to be careful who you're following. And there is one in particular that does a lot of writings. I can tell you that uh, it might have been about, oh, 2015, 16, 17 and there, there were people in the Republic in Colorado and in Missouri that filed those the paperwork of that individual, that agent provocateur. And what happened is they were arrested and put right in prison. Uh, they weren't even taken to a court. They were taken to an Obama fusion center and put right in prison because they removed themselves out of the corporate jurisdiction and they were left in limbo. So uh, warning, warning, be very careful about what you're following. Okay. So what can the American people that are listening to you today, that this is the first time they're hearing this and thought this was already done behind the scenes, what can they do to be part of this, to bring the Republic fully back and have it stand up and be able to kick out the corporate USA? Great question. The national website is republicfortheunitedstatesofamerica.org. There is so much information and knowledge there that you can learn from and glean and also make contact with. Sign up for the email so that you can stay apprised. There are uh, interim offices in states that need to be seated yet. Uh, there were, we went through so much, so many attempts at takedown and fear bombs uh, years ago that uh, traction was lost. So that needs to be regained. We need those of you that have gifts and talents, uh, and we all have talents, and we work hard through our lives to develop those talents, and then we sow them into others, into good things. And there's a time when um, we will be looked at for what we've done, what how we've used our talents and our giftings. And uh, if you have talents that you believe that you could be a good placeholder, for your state, your free state, until someone more qualified comes along or until we have permanent elections and the American people um, are more prepared to fill those offices, step forward, come forward and fill those offices. Find out the status of your free state. Well, it takes many hands to make this happen. And the more that are educated and learn about this, you know what, rise up everybody. It's time to rise up and stand behind and bring the Republic back in full standing. This is something we all that are on this truther movement and awake want to be part of. We want this to happen. We don't want the way the world is going, the way this country is going. So it is time to stand up, be heard, have your voices be heard and take part of history in the making. You know, our forefathers, they did this way back when, where they knew it was death for them to sign that Declaration of Independence. And they were terrified. And they have controlled us through fear. But if everybody bands together and um, takes a stand, we can bring this back real quick. It doesn't have to be a long drawn out process because you have you guys have paved the way and you have already everything in place 
We need placeholders and we're working on a another website where everybody can sign up and be part of this and we can get this done quickly. So say the name of the website you have right now. It's Republic for the United States of America org. Okay. And where to find your books again, just for everybody. The book website is reinhabitedrepublic.com. And that will also lead you to uh, an Amazon link, the Barnes and Noble link. And there is also another book website uh, that offers discounts and I, um, for books there also. And do you have any final words for the audience that you want to share with them? Yes. I exhort you that you do the right thing, that you consider, that you do the due diligence of your own research and find out for yourself. And then for those of you who are believers, if you would understand the prophetic scriptures, then you would understand uh, out, of, out of several of the uh, Old Testament prophets that, um, and, and also in the New Testament, that God's government is restoring in the latter days before his return. And you want to be a part of that. It's very important. The nations of the world are waiting on the American people. The nations of the world, world are already awakened. They've been, they've been praying for us for decades because they know if the American people don't wake up and get it back, they have no hope. And one day, this city upon a hill that our founding fathers re referred to, or in our forefathers referred to as the Republic, the city upon a hill, the light to the nations, one day those nations are gonna copy our law form and the nations of the world are going to become the nations of the Lord. Thank you, Holly. Awesome. So everyone that's listening, it's time to stand up, get involved, become part of this, become part of history in the making, restore the Republic. Let's all band together and make this happen once and for all. You know, they, there was this saying by John F. Kennedy, um, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Your country is waiting on you to stand up and take a stand and put the Republic back in her lawful rightful place. And we have the power as we the people because it is empowerment by we the people, not by a government, not by dictators that sit in Congress or in Washington, D.C. and make laws. This is a government by we the people. And we have the power to do that now. And let's all band together. Jean, I can't thank you enough for coming on. This was a wonderful um, history lesson and educating on everybody for everybody what they can do and I appreciate you coming on and sharing your books and your knowledge thank you so much Holly God bless you thank you bye-bye bye-bye